Now, a lost art today is saving money. Nobody saves money anymore. We all live paycheck to paycheck. Now, that begs the question, how much should we save every single month if we want to be wealthy and rich? Now, like I said, it's a lost art. Most people don't actually save money. We live paycheck to paycheck, and I used to do that too, and I wanna show you exactly how not to do that, actually how to save money become wealthy, and invest that money to make more money. Hey guys, my name's Dustin Heiner with Master Passive Income, and I wanna show you how to quit that J-O-B, that just overbroke job, by investing in real estate rental property so you never, ever have to work a job again. Now, when you're thinking about how much money you should save, it depends on a lot of different variables, but let me give you some great advice that I got when I was much younger. In fact, actually, no, I was a little older. I was like 25 years old when I really started doing this, and I didn't realize it until then that I really should have started saving much, much sooner. What I do is now, I actually have my kids saving 50% of all their birthday money and Christmas money and all that sort of stuff, so they know now. You know, my kids are like, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years old, and so we're saving that money now. For you, depends on where you are, but also what your goals are. But here I'm gonna give you the best thing you could ever do. And before we go any further, I wanna make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because I'm continually giving out three videos a week on how to invest in real estate. So subscribe to my channel right away. So number one, just start saving. If you're gonna start saving just $10 a week or $10 a month, start putting that money aside and over time you're gonna see that grow. Now that's a very, very little bit amount because we wanna get a quick win. We want to get a win under our belt so that we know we can do this because I'll tell you this for sure. As soon as you start investing that $10, you're going to start making more money, but you're also not going to notice that $10 missing out of your checkbook or your credit card statement or your bank account. So as you're making money, you got to think of how much you can save or how much you should save. I'm going to give you the principle. This number one principle you should get to is 10% of your income should be saved for investing. Not save for anything else, you wanna save it for investing. Not saving it for a car, not saving for anything, because remember, the goal is to become wealthy and rich. So the principle is to save 10%, but here's the overall big principle that you need to take hold, that you need to pay yourself first. This is the big, big pro, uh, principle, the advice that you need to take. Pay yourself first. Now, here's what it looks like. Every single month, we all have money coming out of our pockets. We may have rent due. We may have credit card payments. We may have a car payment. We may have, you know, cell phone bills. We have all this money coming out of our pocket every single month. Now, you may be thinking, pay yourself first. Well, I am paying myself first, and I'm paying for my credit card bills. Like, I'm paying for this, and I'm paying for that. Well, that is not paying yourself first. It's actually not. What you wanna do in paying yourself first, man, this is a big overarching principle that you wanna do for everything, for saving and becoming wealthy and rich, is pay yourself first. And that looks like, like I just said, that 10% a month that you're gonna be saving, setting aside for investing, you're saying this is not gonna to go to mortgage, or my rent, or my cell phone bill, or internet bill, or whatever it might be. It's not gonna to go to any bill. It's basically going into my savings account. When you pay yourself first 10%, it's gonna look like if you're getting a paycheck that your paycheck is $1,000, you're gonna set aside, I know it's gonna be hard, but you're gonna set aside $100 a month or every single time you get that paycheck, you're setting aside $100 for future investing. And I kid you not, because I did this, now I have 30 plus rental properties I had literally quit my job when I was 37 years old because I had so much money saved up. I bought property after property after property. So this is what you wanna do. Pay yourself first, 10%. Now from there, you're gonna get quick wins where you're gonna be saying, hey man, I have a little bit of money coming out of my pocket. Now here's a big pro tip that I want to give you. As you're starting to grow, your big pro tip is you want to then employ or buy things that are gonna make you money. Don't go out and buy a car. That's the big pro tip. Don't go out and buy something with this money you paid yourself first. Remember, this money is gonna help you to get wealthy and help you to get rich. Now, as you're starting with 10%, you want to start moving up to 11, 12, or 13%. The goal would fantastically be is if you can get to 50%. If you can get to 50% of your money being saved for investing, you can make so much money and be wealthy so much faster. See, now I quit my job when I was 37 years old because I saved my money and then bought a property. 
bought that property, made money, $250 every single month in passive income, put that money in my pocket for future investing. Then I bought my second property, saved all that money that made me $250 or more, then saved that money, then bought another property, saved that money, then bought another property, I just kept doing it over and over again. And I absolutely wanna show you how to do this. In the description below, if you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, click the link below where I will give you my free course showing you how to do this, how to find properties, how to invest in the properties, how to make sure it's an automatic business running itself, how to get money to do this. I'll give you my free course. So go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course or click the link below. Now there's more things I wanna share with you if you're gonna start investing. Now I wish I would've started investing when I was young. So it also depends on the age or how old you are. So if you're younger, let's say if you're listening to this and you're 15 years old or you're, you're in your teens, you wanna try to be saving closer to 50%. And the reason why, you have less responsibilities. You don't, hopefully you don't have a mortgage. You hopefully you don't have rent. Your parents are helping you. You don't need to pay for food instead of spending all that money on the new phones or you know playing Xbox or PlayStation or something like that. Save 50% of your money. The reason why, like I said, you have less responsibilities. You don't need to pay that money out pay that money to you first. Now, if you're in your 20s, if you now have gone for your teens, you're now in your 20s, your goal is to just get to 10%. I would personally suggest getting to 20%. If you're in your 20s, you wanna save 20% of your money. The reason why is you're able to employ or buy that property or buy investments faster because you have more cash. And I'll tell you, out of all the coaching students that I have, where I teach them how to invest in rental properties, what I do is I usually take on students who have more than $10,000 in savings to help them buy that first rental property. Remember, every single one of these rental properties make them $250 or more in passive income every single month. Now, if they have less than $10,000, it's a lot of work. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not impossible to start with lower than $10,000 but it's very, very hard. There's a reason why very few people actually do that. So what I say is we try to get to $10,000. Once you have $10,000, you can come and work with me and I will show you how to find properties that'll make you $250 a month. Now, in your 20s, you wanna to get to 10%, that's easily, but 20%, your responsibilities aren't as high as once you start getting married and you have kids, then it gets really high. So let's say you're in your 20s, now you get into your 30s. If you're listening to this, and you're in your 30s and you're thinking, how much should I be saving? Well, number one, you gotta take care of your responsibilities. If you have um, you know, a spouse and you have kids and you have a mortgage, you definitely need to take care of that. One thing I would suggest in the personal pro tip is, your pro tip is be frugal. Be as frugal as you can, cut out the expenses. I will tell you, for 10 years, I sacrificed everything to be able to invest and buy more properties. And the reason why is, Every penny that went to something else, like a vacation or a trip to Disneyland or whatever, a new car, whatever it might be, I pictured in my mind, oh my goodness, that is one penny less that's not going to a rental property that's making me more money. See, now rental properties is like a snowball. You buy one property, you make a small snowball and you're on top of the hill. Well then, with that first property, you roll it down the hill and that's making $250. Well, at first, because you're on a mountain of a bunch of snow, you roll that snowball down. At first, it's a little slow but then it starts grabbing more snow and it gets a little faster. That's when you buy your second property. It gets a little faster. You get $500 a month. Two properties making you $250 or more every single month, that's $500. That's $6,000 a year in your pocket. That's that snowball getting a little bigger and a little bigger. Now you buy the next property. Don't go out and spend that $500 a month. Like don't just go get you know a, a car for $500 a month. Save that money sacrifice. I'll tell you what I did. For about seven or eight years, I did not go on any vacation other than driving from California to Arizona to go to my in-laws for Christmas or Thanksgiving. That was it. We didn't do anything else because every single penny that went to something else did not go to a rental property that would make me more money. Now I have 30 plus properties. We have tens of thousands of dollars coming in every single month in passive income. And again, I don't do any work. I don't do any work on, this pro on these properties. I have property managers, I have realtors, I have inspectors, I have you know, handymen and contractors, I have all these other people do the work for me. So what you're doing now is you're taking this money that you're saving. Remember, you're paying yourself first, you're putting that, employing it, or you're buying a property that is gonna make you money. Now that snowball is getting bigger with three properties. Then 
you buy the fourth property and you're also using leverage. I have another video called Real Estate Leverage. If you look in the link below in the description, I actually talk to you how to actually use leverage, basically using other people's money, which is, I love using other people's money. I show you exactly how to use other people's money to buy more properties to make more money. And this is what it comes down to. As a snowball goes down, it gets faster. It grabs more snow and gets faster and gets bigger and faster and faster and faster. Same thing with real estate. After you have 10 properties making you $250 a month, that is $2,500 a month in passive income. That is $30,000 a year in passive income. Can you believe that? Now, if you have 20 properties making you $250 a month in passive income, that is $60,000 a year in passive income. You're literally not working at all. I'll give you an example. Most of us have seen the book for our work week. Well, I personally, with my rental properties, I have 30 plus properties, I don't work four hours a week. In fact, I'll tell you how much I work. I work 30 minutes, not a week, 30 minutes a month. I work 30 minutes a month, and all it is is just to getting my property statements from my property managers, making sure everything looks good, making sure I got the money, and then put it away, and I don't do anything else, because the reason why is my properties work for me, my tenants pay my bills, and my property manager does all the work. Now, here's what's great with investing in real estate. As you're thinking of saving money to buy a property, we put a down payment down, which is a smaller amount for the entire purchase. A down payment of a $100,000 house could be as low as 3.5%. So what it would look like is, you're gonna buy a rental property that you're gonna live in for a year using an FHA loan. That FHA loan is 3.5% down. You're buying the house for $100,000, well, you're only putting $3,500 down. You live in there a year and then you move out and the one year is a criteria that the FHA, the Federal Housing Administration loan, they need you to live in there for a year or require you for you living for a year, but then you move out and you only have $3,500 into that house. Now, here's the great thing. When I buy a property, I don't pay my mortgage. I kid you not. I don't pay my mortgage. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay my property taxes. I don't pay my property manager. I don't pay to repair the property. I don't pay any of that stuff. My tenants pay all of that. I literally don't do that myself. It does not come out of my pocket. It comes out of the tenant's pocket. And here's the great thing about real estate is if you're investing, you're saving that money, putting it towards a rental property, you are already accounting for every single expense from the mortgage to your property manager, to your inspections, to your insurance, to your property taxes. All that is already accounted for. And then you add up all those expenses. Then you rent it for more and that difference is $250 or more in passive income. I'll give you round numbers and I'll give you an example. Let's say you're renting the property for $1,000. You wanna make sure that you rent it out and your expenses are $750 or below that. So $1,000 minus $750 is $250 a month in passive income. My students are able to buy properties that all the expenses total are $750 and their rents are $1,000 and they're making $250 or more. So that is the beauty of having money to then buy a property. See, if you have money to buy a property, you have money for a down payment. So you don't have to pay for it all cash. Not many people have 50, 60, $100,000 sitting around that they could just buy a property or more. Most of us, we utilize down payment, basically put a little bit of money down so that we can get a bank to give us money. Now there are so many different ways to actually get financing. Check in the description below. I love showing people how to find different financing. In fact, there's one video, check below. It's 14 different ways, literally 14 different ways to utilize other people's money to buy rental properties. And so that is what we wanna do. We wanna save money every single month, pay ourselves first. We wanna say at minimum 10% a month, savings going to buy an investment, a property that's gonna be making us money. Now, when are we doing that? If you could save 20%, do that. If you need to live at your parents' house while you're not paying rent and save that money to buy your first house, do that. We wanna save as much money as we can to buy a rental property. So, all right, you guys, that's what we wanna do is we wanna start saving 10%, pay yourself first, watch this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm giving out so much great insights into how to invest in real estate rental properties. So click that subscribe so you get all this great stuff absolutely for free.